Steve's will not be making it, and uh, we may have um, a visitor come in if Lori makes it. But so that being the case, I'll um, start the meeting. We uh, we have in front of us, or we have had in front of us, the minutes from the August 26th board meeting. Um, we've all had a chance to review it. Are there any corrections, comments, deletions, what have you, regarding those minutes from the August 26th meeting? Um, They're fine. If not, I think that we will let them stand as as they are and be part of the record and we'll move forward. And then, Nate, you're up for the uh, attorney's report. Yep, so unfortunately we were supposed to have a zoning board meeting at six o'clock tonight and then at seven o'clock just now um, review the application for a special use permit regarding the uh, digital sign, digital billboard sign. Um, the applicant earlier today indicated, uh, surprisingly to me anyway, that they never received the code enforcement officer's formal denial of their application for a sign permit. And so they were apparently, again, surprising to me because we sent them a lot of things over a month ago, indicating clearly, I think, that they needed a variance. But they said today they didn't know it was an area variance and they requested essentially that the hearings today be adjourned until next month so that they have time to review the area variance criteria, the special permit criteria, and make a better presentation at the next meeting. If I had to guess, I would say it's really the county's 239 comments recommending denial of the project that really um, have caused them to reassess and really realize they need to come in with a airtight um, presentation. And even the fact that there's only three of you on the call tonight, you wouldn't have been able to approve it tonight anyway, because you need a super majority vote, which is four of you in right. order to approve it. If that's what you even wanted to do, of course. I mean, that's well, the other, yes. Lori's coming, Lori's he, coming on. Just okay, so very know. good. The, um, the gentleman with, from the email threads that I was reading, he seemed to indicate it was a communication issue of some sort, whether it was his understanding or or lack thereof, or, or us not telling them, uh, it doesn't really matter now because there's nothing we can do on that tonight. We'll just wait till October. Um, is there any other issue that you have, Nate? Um, nothing I think I currently got to report on. I actually wanted to ask um, how the vehicle situation is going. I yeah, I will get to that, but we'll do it um, in old business. So yeah. I, I have okay. uh, one question for you, Nate. Do we need to automatically schedule this for the first meeting in October again? Uh, I would say the first meeting. No, no point in pushing it beyond that. All right. um, I mean, we, we could do it because you guys have two meetings a month, right? Two meetings a month. Um, so I will go ahead and let the, the zoning board know that. The next question that I have then follows up to, we require them to pay the ad for having the public hearing. Will we require them to pay the ad a second time since we've already had to run it once? You know, I mean, I, I would be inclined to say yes. They're the ones who requested that this thing be adjourned. If they push back on that for whatever reason, um, you know, we can okay. wait to see how that discussion goes. Yep, not a problem. Thank you. Okay. I have one, one question. Um, did we hear anything yet from the county or the two, uh, the 239 review or is it at the county for uh, the McDonald's sign request? Uh, that hasn't yet been sent into the county. I know Ken had emailed me, was it today or yesterday, I th think, actually just this morning, um, the actual denial. Right. Um, and so I'm actually, this, this whole conversation with the digital sign is going to prompt me to ask him has he sent the denial? Right. Well, the I, right. I've had a, a few issues with with Ken um, along those lines, so I'll just sit and say uh, there's nothing for us to do yet except um, make sure he communicates with who he needs to communicate with. Okay. Anything else, Nate? 
Uh, nope, nothing further at this point. Okay, now, Lori, Lori, you, you're welcome to join us. I'm going to stick you in the agenda right now so you can be early and then not stay for anything that's boring. Um, okay. Lori Warfield uh, has a request for uh, signage that she ran by Ken and Ken copied us. And Lori, I'll give you the floor. You can tell the board what it's for and what it's about and what you what we, you would like. Okay, can you hear me first of all? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the sign is for the Broome County Art Trail, an event sponsored by the Broome County Arts Council and the Broome County Chamber of Commerce. We have participants in the Northern Broome area in this art trail. It is a two day event, October 3rd and 4th, where venues are open for people to come and view different forms of art. Um, we did get approval from Ken for yard signs, but there is also a street banner that would be available to Whitney Point that is three feet by 15 feet and says the date, the name of the event, and contact, you know, broomartscouncil.org. So we're looking for permission specifically for the banner to be strung over Main Street. We would need village assistance in hanging that, and I believe that's why it was referred to the board meeting. Right, now, um, we wish this event to have great success. It's a great event and uh, I think it will have good success. Um, regarding the overhanging sign, street sign, in the past, the, the village board was very hesitant to do that. I know a number of times um, it was denied. Uh, my wife wanted to, to do it one time or be part of a Christmas or winter celebration and so on. But I understand several years ago, um, in the interim when I was not in the mayor's seat, um, it was a part of the block party several years ago. But and uh, our public works people put it up, and I conferred with them after this request came through, and um, they, they said it, there were problems with it. There were problems with it. The the wind being the main problem. They put it up, they put it up across the street and it was there, but the wind made a mess of it and it, it, it didn't work out too well. So that's one reason um, that and the fact of putting our public works people up to do it, uh, that was why years ago we, we, we denied the uh, request um, as, as uh, solid as it may, may seem, but um, that's that's my input. Do any of the trustees or does the attorney, does anybody else have any input? Lori, I just wondered, this is Bob Heinley. I just wondered where you were proposing to string it, like from from building to building, from a pole to a pole? Are, are there... um, because, again, I, I assume that the village would not want us to hang it because it is over a street. I would leave that to the village. I do recall the block party banner uh, going from somewhere near the fire station and across the street. Um, also, the banner would have the wind slits cut in it um, to help with, you know, the wind being an issue on a solid sheet that's three by 15 feet. This would have slits in it to allow for some wind passage. Okay, any other comments or questions? Hi, Lori, this is Jason Summers. Um, what's the duration this is gonna be hung during? It I would be two week period, um, so shortly, uh, prior to the event and through the event. So going two weeks back from October 4th being the last day. Yeah, I saw in your email you requested by September 14th. So two weeks, I was thinking. Well, that would be three. So we can go go out a week. I'm good with that. Uh, Mayor, this is Nate, just real quick. Do, does the village own the poles in the village streets? I see Linda shaking her head now. 
No, I think they're nice exposed. We, we, it was strung last time from building to building, which are privately owned buildings. Uh, maybe the fire station is, if a fire station, but the building across the street uh, was, it was Ed Quinn was the owner uh, at that time. And uh, the fire station would be the village property. But that, I understand that they were, it was building to building, not the poles. But that would be problematic because of, uh, I don't think there's poles on both sides of the street. And uh, they're, it's nice, nice property. And then um, if the village were asked or it was expected that the village would hang the banner, I think the village would have to be compensated for the time of its employees to actually go out and lift the sign and string it across. Yeah, it's labor intensive. So is there an alternative to where a 15 foot banner might be displayed? Um, I had sent in a separate email to Ken asking if it would be permissible to put a save the date uh, post where we used to put the Fall Fest sandwich board right by the historical, uh, new historical sign. What if um, I were to put a 15 foot banner there instead? That might be the trick because I think he was have jurisdiction on that. And you wouldn't, I, I believe that you wouldn't need board approval on, on that. Am I correct on that, Nate? Uh, typically, if the, the only thing that the board would be involved in is if it's either a sign that requires a special use permit, a variance of some sort, or is simply not allowed at all it's being asked to attach to municipal property. If it's an approved or an allowable sign, I think Ken could just approve it. Right, then like Lori said, there have been signs in the past for other events uh, where she uh, is uh, indicating, which is on the, you know, on the ground. Lori, um, had you thought about asking Gary uh, Connell at the fairgrounds about putting it on the fence? Um, I had not. I kind of like it at an intersection where it's viewed from an intersection, sure. if possible. But absolutely, I could do that again. That's another Fall Fest location I've utilized. Right. Um, if that would just be easier all around, absolutely, I would be willing to do that. And if you could just spit out the name again for me to the new contact. I had always contacted Rita. Yeah, well, Rita is one. Rita is one. She's a treasure. But Gary is the president. Rita could get you with who you need to go to. Okay. Gary well, then, Cornell. Is, is yep. it, um, you know, go, go with Rita if, if you've worked with her in the past. All right. So let's just take this right off the table then. And that's what I will try to do okay. with it. Okay. Like I said, you'd, I think you'd be welcome to put it at the other place. But the fence might be the best alternative all the, all the way around. Right, we could go down by the subway where it's perpendicular right. To the road. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks so much, everybody, for your well, time. Well, thank you, Lori, and uh, good luck with the event. We'll look forward to seeing it uh, on the third and the fourth, October third and fourth. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good evening thank now. All right. Thank you, Lori. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Next, the clerk treasurer's report. Mine was just a statement from closing out the month financial. Well, they looked. We did get our 100,000 reimbursement back from our SAM grant, which went back into our building reserve, which made that look very nice. Yes, and um, everything looked reasonable um, to me. Um, no surprises. Mm -mm. We did close out the HP fund as a result. We don't need that any longer since we've now got the grant back and stuff. So that's closed. Okay. Anybody have any questions regarding uh, anything for the clerk treasurer? If not, we'll move right along. Now, we did not get the code enforcement report. We did not get the dog control report. Uh, so the next report is the fire department. Um, any questions regarding the fire department report? 
So the next one is the library report. Which is not on your agenda, but it's there. We'll call it six and a half. Okay, I'll assume no questions. We'll go to the public works report. And I'll again assume no questions. I'll go to the sewer report. What's I, have, Dave, I can't find the public works one. Public works? It, it had the um, standard issues, standard procedures that they did for August and then the planned projects for September. And since you didn't get that, I just don't see it in the drop box. I'm, I know, I'm, but I'm just going to read. I'm, I'm there going to just right read now. the few plan to. Okay. Well, it looks like one of the things they'll be doing uh, for September is uh, getting ready for the electronics recycling in October. Otherwise, just, uh, otherwise, pretty, otherwise pretty standard issue. I just added it, Bob. You should say it in a minute or two. Sorry about that. I'm looking at it now. Okay, Mr. Mayor, thank you for letting me look at that. Okay, very good. Um, so that's it for the reports. Um, and we'll move to old business. Now, Nate, this is where the abandoned vehicles come in. First off, before I talk, I'll ask if anybody else has any uh, old business they want to mention. And assuming there is none, I will mention our old business with abandoned vehicles. You may recall we had some uh, abandoned vehicles that we decided to um, enforce the provisions to uh, get them to move the vehicles or we would. There ended up being four vehicles. Um, to make a long story short, three of them were moved voluntarily um, within less than a day, but the fourth one is still there. The troopers have run the plates. They've tried to get a hold of the owner and been unsuccessful. Um, we took the sign off of the car because we didn't want the village to look bad saying that this would be impounded in 72 hours, but it's still sitting there, better part of a week later, uh, but it's still there. Uh, the feeling among uh, the team here, especially our parking enforcement, um, Mr. Lamro, is that it truly is abandoned, and the fact that the troopers can't locate the owner would lend credence to that idea. Um, I've been trying to get an answer from the troopers and I met with them as recently as 45 minutes ago. They're, they were, they've been very busy and not in the facility too often, but um, they are gonna come in and have a meeting with us, with me in the uh, tomorrow morning at 8.30 with a game plan for removing the vehicle and to impound it and where to go because those guys really didn't need, know the procedure, but there is a procedure involving either the troopers, the sheriffs, or, or both, on where, what you do uh, in this situation and where you put it. At such time as we do that, or as a, such time as we get the game plan, then we can put the sign back up on the, or a sign back up on the car saying, hey, we're impounding this vehicle due to violation. Here's where you could call to, if you want to claim your vehicle. 
uh, at which point they'd have to pay for the towing and whatever associated charges there might be. So really, we're waiting to find out what the game plan is to pursue that uh, impoundment. And that's where we're at right at the moment. Any questions or comments on that? So Nate, we'll go. We'll do what you suggested, as you could see. But um, we were hoping we didn't have to actually impound one, but we do have to, uh, unless the, it magically disappears. Which it, which it might. Um, yes. Is is it? Does it look or appear as if it's in working condition? Um, it looks in good shape. Um, the, the the plate matches the registration, everything. What uh, what I noticed when I looked at when we put the stickers on was that. The hood was a jar about an inch, indicating somebody had been, you know, maybe trying to work on the engine or look at it. Might be a dead battery. Who who knows what it is? But the the, the car doesn't look in bad shape from the exterior. And um, yeah, there, there's there's definitely, and I'm sure this is what the troopers will talk about. You uh, talk about tomorrow. There's a procedure for abandoned vehicles. Right. under state law and so i'm assuming that's the process that they'll walk you through and as the village i think you you might end up getting to own it at the end of the day if it's left unclaimed for a certain right. period of time right uh, not that well, we want to well, well, they the two troopers really didn't know that much about it. they were going to research it and, and be ready to talk about it at 8 30. so uh whatever happens um i'll pass along and we'll have to decide uh what uh how whether we want to follow their recommendations or how to go about it. So the board will get back in that one. Okay. Um, there really isn't any other old business that I think bears discussing. Um, so unless somebody has something that they want to interject, I'm going to jump to new business. Does anybody have any new business they want to discuss? Well, as always, the mayor finds something, but very limited, just one little minor thing. Um, our code enforcement guy got um, an email request from um, somebody who does interior renovations for Dollar General. He wanted to know if he needed uh, a permit, a building permit for what he plans on doing in there, which involves painting and this, that, and the other thing. He does not need a building permit. Ken answered him and I got copied on that. So the idea there is, is that he doesn't get have to get a permit for any of that. But I'm just saying that it, it, it guy's going to do it soon, so we don't have a date. But it means that that's a pretty popular spot for our buying public, uh, just be aware that, that some one of these days, uh, Dollar General might be um, closed for business uh, due to renovations. They're going to change their color scheme. That's what I got out of that email. The guy's changing. It's a, I think it's, uh, it's a, probably a nationwide thing, but whenever they're going to change their color scheme. So they're going to be some goings on at Dollar General. And that's, that's about the size of that. Anybody have anything else? Okay, short and sweet. I just, I just okay. wanted to know about our election is coming up. Tuesday. And, and we're, we're still doing that in person? That is still in person. Our inspectors are set. We're good to go. Um, we've got our updated um, voter registration listing. We're, we're good. And at the town office. Town office, yes. So I'm noon um, to nine. Do we have to advertise that, Linda? Uh, it's already been advertised. Or Sandy's got okay, that part helped that with. So we're good. Jason's put it out. We're we're good. So that's next Tuesday. Tuesday, yes. Okay, very one from good. March, and then we'll turn around and do another one in March. Okay. And <laughs> anything Sorry. else maybe maybe we'll do it in march right but in any case we we think we're going forward with this march election next week um anything else from anybody do we do we know has the governor chimed in on future meetings for us still linda got something she told me so a little while ago early october nate i believe and charlie has not opened the building yet it'll be zoom uh next meeting will be zoom and, uh, got, early October. 
I'd gotten a phone call from Mike Hakes this afternoon asking me if I knew because they were doing curriculum for the coming school year and for the seniors who have to do government work wanting to know whether it was going to be online or whether there were going to be meetings they could attend and I said I didn't know but they could always zoom into our meetings and we we I think they will if they have to but yeah. So they used to bring they used to bring their paperwork up for me to sign so they get credit for being at the meeting. So well, they'd yeah. be on the recording because they'd have to sign on or they'd have to have permission to come on. So I would have a list of the kids who come in. So. Well, for the foreseeable future, apparently we'll be doing Zoom. So you can tell Mike that, and hopefully he'll be on the next one. Anything else? That being the case, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Good to see everybody. Good to see Good you to guys, see, too. Good to see you all. Stay. Hey, Nate, I got a quick question before you go. Stay safe. Oh. Okay.